one of the most well-known painters of the Renaissance that was patronized by the Medici was Leonardo da Vinci. Many people refer to him simply as Leonardo. And Leonardo is often called the genius of the Renaissance. Not only was Leonardo a painter, but he had an incredible thirst for knowledge. His mind was restless. It roamed from place to place, from invention to invention, from painting to painting. He wanted to know all that could be known. He wanted to understand the world that he lived in, and he wanted to make the world that he lived in a better place. He leaves sketches and plans for flying machines, war machines, submarines, turbines, elevators, centuries before those things actually were invented. He gives us plans for ideal cities, intricate studies in anatomy, where he seeks to discover how blood circulates. He was a geologist. He was a botanist. His mind um, was encyclopedic, encyclopedic. He wanted to know, again, everything that there was to know. We're going to look at, though, very briefly, two of his most famous paintings, the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper, and see how they are representative of this time period. We're going to find and see if we can locate the Renaissance values and characteristics we've seen thus far in these two most famous works by Leonardo. Perhaps, though, the most interesting thing about Leonardo are his notebooks. This is where he leaves us those sketches of his inventions, of parts of paintings, of beginnings of masterpieces. This is where we find out about who Leonardo really was. Interestingly, Leonardo wrote his notebooks in a special code called mirror writing. He wrote backwards so that when you held the page of the notebook up to a mirror, the reflection would be written correctly. He was a very fascinating man. And his works usually reflect his concern for mathematical proportion, his love for beauty, and his great respect for the natural world. Even in the Mona Lisa, an otherwise small portrait, you can see his love and his reverence for the natural world. You see the background of the portrait is of a landscape. That was important to Leonardo. This is a relatively small picture. It's about two and a half feet by not quite two feet. And it was painted on a piece of wood. Leonardo loved this picture, and he carried around with him everywhere he went. In this picture, you see some themes developing, or you see some themes, actually, that we've seen over and over in the paintings and the sculptures of this time period. The quest for ideal beauty. For Leonardo, beauty was related to math to ideal proportion, to the relationship in the human body of the eyes to the nose, the nose to the mouth, the mouth to the chin, and so on and so forth. So he was striving to create this mathematically exact, mathematically ideal figure in the Mona Lisa. The smile of the Mo Mona Lisa is probably one of the most famous ever created in art it's referred to as that curious half-smile. And da Vinci himself says that it is the symbol of the secret of the universe. Da Vinci's The Last Supper. This painting is considered to be mathematically perfect. The disciples are, are arranged in four distinct groups. And Christ is in the center of the center window where all the lines in the room converge. As with other Renaissance paintings that we've seen, here you have a very biblical subject treated in a very human way. This is the moment in the Bible 
in which Jesus is dining with his disciples. This is the last meal that they will have together before his crucifixion. And at this moment, Jesus announces to the disciples that one of them is going to betray him. Now we know from reading the Bible that that betrayer was Judas. But at the moment when it was asked, no one but Judas knew the betrayal had occurred. And so you see the disciples with very human reactions. Is it me? No, it can't be me. Oh, who do you think it is? So you see the humanness of the divine that is so characteristic of the Renaissance brought to bear in this painting. The balance and the order and the proportion is obvious and reflect those Renaissance values. A couple of interesting things about this painting that you might not have known. One is it was very common during the Renaissance for painters to um, paint what are called frescoes, which just, which just meant that painters painted on a wall of wet plaster. Leonardo, however, decided that he wanted to paint this particular painting not on wet plaster, but on dry plaster. So almost as soon as he finished the work, it began to flake off. It has relatively recently undergone a massive restoration, and that is the image of what you see here. Now, the other thing that you might notice about this painting that's quite curious is the fact that Jesus has no feet. Well, that was not da Vinci's intent. As you can see, all the other disciples have feet. Around 1650, um, a person thought that, first of all, this painting is on the wall of a refectory in a monastery. And a refectory is just like the dining hall. And in s around 1650, someone decided they needed another door in the refectory. And guess where they put it? Right over Jesus' feet. So, that's what that, <laughs> um, that's why Jesus has no feet. So, for the next little while in the course, you're going to learn more about da Vinci. More about the type of life he led, the type of man he was, and why he is considered such an important figure in the Renaissance.